I'm Father Tim McGrath, I'm the parish priest of St. Mary's in Bridge End, Our Lady Star of the Sea in Porthcawl, and St. Joseph of Adamathia in Pyle, which are all in the Archdiocese of Cardiff, which is in Wales, in the UK. My earliest memories of Christmas is, um, I'm, I'm one of twins, and um, my mother, my older brother, and my sister, because my dad died when we were four, but my mother, my older brother, and my sister, they always used to go off to midnight mass. And that used to just leave us as twins, and we were only could have only been about four, maybe five at the time there. You should probably get arrested by the police now for leaving us like that. But they would always go off for, for midnight mass, and your was saying was always to wish to go to midnight mass. Um, and we used to wait up then until my mum had come home from midnight mass. And then once she'd come home, um, the, the, the turkey would be sort of cooking and all sorts of things would be happening there. Um, and then we'd eventually go to bed and, and luckily Father Christmas would come because we hadn't been that bad. Santa Claus was very much part of it, but also you know, very much part of it was the, 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 um, Jesus Christ as well. You know, you, you, you go there, you, 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 you had to go to Mass most certainly. That was, that was not, even a, not even thought about that you could miss it. You were, it was a definite given. And one of your ambitions always was to be old enough to go to, to Midnight Mass. So once you could, and you know, my mother had a strict one that we wouldn't go there until we were either serving on the altar or, and you could only do that after you'd made your first Holy Communion, which meant we had to be about seven before we went up there. I, I, I think over the years, Christmas has, has, has become more special to, to myself than what it actually meant uh, when I was a child. You know, it, it was always that, that special sort of day, of course it was, it was always washing. But um, whether we'd actually or, you know, fully grasped the greatness of the incarnation and fully grasped what that meant for us. I mean, as long as we had a full stocking with something in it, then we were all happy and that, that was the, the greatness of where the, those things were. And they say, as you, as you grow older, Christmas takes on another meaning and that, that spiritual meaning does then start to take hold and, and sort of mean a lot more. One of the things I, I always, ever since I've, I've been a, a parish priest, is never fails to move me is, is I look out on Christmas Eve and I see all or Christmas might mass, you know, midnight mass here. You see all the different peoples we have, all the di different relations and all, all the peoples who are gathered here. And I look, and sometimes I, I actually do feel that, you know, these are my flock. Who's going to take care of them? Who's going to look after them? And, you know, that's the great privilege of being, you know, called as a priest there. That, you know, that privilege has been given to me. And, you know, it's, it is a great privilege in its way. And Christmas particularly is one of those times because like the shepherds there, you know, maybe I wasn't quite as good as I should have been and maybe I called and didn't do quite what I should have done as a young man. But certainly, you know, you change yourselves and you come back around and you come back in and act as a shepherd with Christ. So I actually like the wise men. I think the wise men are, are, are wonderful and, and partly because it ties up with that temple theology um, of what we are, you know, they, and, and also partly because it ties up with that kingdom theology. Mary is being seen as, is with, with Jesus there. Luke puts, oh, sorry, Matthew puts her at the, at the high point there and they're worshiping Mary and they're not worshiping Mary, they're not, or they're acknowledging Mary because it's acknowledging the kingdom of God and Mary is fulfilling her role as the queen mother in that kingdom. And that's the great part about it. And the, the temple theology, you know, that we, we're all trying to get and be part of that mystical body of Christ, that temple that Paul keeps hammering home about, you know, we're living stones in this temple. We are, we are, we are those living stones. Wonderful stuff. It's important to see where the, the amount of people who do actually just stop and acknowledge and come back at Christmas time, friends, family. You know, it, it, quite often we're, we're very blessed here because we have a midnight mass at midnight. And you know, I, I see some of the characters from the pub there come down and come in and just quietly sneak in the back of the church there and you know, give a wave or an acknowledgement to me and I wave back to them and whatever. And that's part of, of, of where it is. So yes, there is an ignorance of, of of Christ and an ignorance of scripture of in the in the sense of Christmas and its full meaning, most certainly that. But also there's a deep longing in people. And that is what Christmas actually ultimately fulfills. And it's not the first time it's ever happened to us. You know, I mean always, always when Jesus was born, let's be fair, there was no room at the inn and there was only a couple of shepherds come to visit him. The the wise men would come later. But that's all it was. And maybe you know, sometimes when we're reduced to that, that's all we need.
But the truth of the matter is, as long as we're proclaiming it, then that light will shine in the darkness, as it should do. God makes a series of covenants throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. And these covenants are, a covenant is important because a covenant makes family. And that becomes important. That's why a marriage is not just a collection of promises. A marriage is a covenant because it makes a family. And so there's a series of covenants. God makes the first covenant with Adam and Eve. And that's a married couple. He makes the second covenant with Noah. But Noah's with a family. He makes the third covenant there with um, Abraham. But everybody tends to think that Abraham is on his own, but he's not, he's with a tribe. And you'll see him put a number of men out to, in battle. So that tribe is with him. So he's, a, he's made a tribe. Then he'll make another covenant with Moses. And Moses will take those 12 tribes and weld them into a nation. They start off in Egypt as just 12, but when they go into the promised land, they've got to be a nation. They have to be a nation. And then you'll make another covenant with David. And David will be the, the covenant where he will make a kingdom. And kingdoms are important because people acknowledge kingdoms, and pe people respect them and come to kingdoms to be part of them. And you'll see that as the high point when Solomon has the Queen of Sheba go up to meet him. And then there's finally the last of the great covenants, the last covenant made by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper there. And that covenant, that covenant is the greatest because it's the universal covenant, or as we would know it as the Catholic covenant because the Catholic means universal. And so God has steadily throughout the Old Testament been trying to increase his family, trying to bring them back to him, trying to restore us back into that union. And it is that great birth of Christ that anticipates that coming covenant and anticipates our salvation. My message would always be enjoy, 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 rejoice, because you see throughout all of Luke, is rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Always, always, that is the message. And you know, as Christians, we can go around and go, oh, look, this, the world is doing this, the world's doing that, the world is doing that. No one's listening to me, no one's taking any notice of me. It's nothing new under the sun. It's happened all the time. Just rejoice with our family and tell them why we're rejoicing. Why we go around with a smile on our face and are happy. Because we live and because Jesus Christ has come into our lives and given us life to the full. And that's the most important. Sing hymns joyfully, most certainly. Celebrate with your family. If you've got strangers, invite them in as well, because the whole point of it is to rejoice. And as long as people see us rejoicing, then they'll think, they've got something that I haven't got. Because be many people this Christmas, as good as it's supposed to be, will be lonely, or will be without anyone. And yet all they need to do is often step through the doors and rejoice with God's family. And most certainly I wish you all, your families, your friends and everybody, a joyful, happy and blessed, peaceful Christmas. I would like to thank you for watching Shalom World Television because, as you know, it brings Christ into your homes and into your hearts. That's why I'm so pleased to be able to endorse its work. It's a great tool for evangelization throughout the whole world. And therefore, I give you my blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.